Every Facebook Ads campaign has three levels. At the campaign level, we set our objective. The ad set level contains our target audience, our budget, our timing, etc. And the ad level is where your actual ad sits, which includes your creative, wording, picture or video, headline and link if you're using one. Understanding your campaign objective is the first step. So when you go to create a campaign, the first thing you'll need to do is choose an objective. You can hover over each objective to get a bit more information. Brand awareness and reach similar. Brand awareness is more targeted, while reach is the maximum number of views you can get for your ad. Traffic is the objective you would select for getting clicks to your website or landing page. The engagement objective can be used to feed your retargeting and sales ads. You can select an existing post or an event on your page or create a specific engagement ad. This is also where you'd create page likes ads. You'll get much better reach running an engagement ad so it's useful for prospecting to feed your retargeting ads with fresh new leads. Video views is the best way to get maximum views on your videos. Again, it can feed your engagement and retargeting audiences. A conversion objective requires the Facebook pixel. This is the end game for measuring actual sales or other interactions on your website and for building advanced retargeting segments. So I often get asked by people, how do I set my budget? Only you as the business owner can really set your budget and there are many factors that influence this. People talk about $5 a day, that really doesn't do much in Australia. I'd think more about $10 to $20 a day and even up to $25 a day to begin with to get you through the learning phase. Don't stop your campaigns if they're working, the machine will need to start over. I often say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And this really does apply to Facebook ads. You can reach a thousand people for $5 or even lower with an engagement or reach campaign. Targeting can push the cost up, but you'll get better results with a more targeted campaign if you're looking for clicks or conversions. I like to see my targeted ads come in under a $20 CPM. That's $20 for a thousand eyeballs. But this can be higher for retargeting depending on the audience pool. Clicks can be $1 each or lower, but usually more like $2 each. Page likes can be around $1 to $2 each, sometimes more. Leads for around $3 to $4 is good, but it really depends on the value of your product or service and what you consider a lead. A cost per conversion could vary depending on the price of your product and the demand. These numbers are very general in nature and provided as a guide only, but I hope that you find them useful to give you a starting point. We can also use these numbers to help us understand and measure our results. Now here's what a complex campaign could look like. You still have one objective per campaign, but you might want to try different targeting options and run different sets of creative by nesting more ad sets and ads under your campaign. And Facebook will automatically optimize these to choose the best performing targets and creative over time. I often like to say, put your trust in the machine. It's smarter than us and works all day, every day, searching and analyzing to get the best results possible. Remember to also give the machine enough time to find the right people for you. We would usually run a test campaign for one week before making any judgments on its success, or at least a few days if you press for time. If you check it any sooner than this, you just haven't given Facebook enough time to do its thing. So don't think just because one audience, that's an ad set, or one set of creative, that's the ad itself, works best after 24 hours, that that is the final results. You really need at least three days, even up to five or seven, if you can afford it, to keep your ads running before you can make an informed judgment. With your audience targeting, don't be afraid to go a bit broader. Not too broad though, the machine really is smart at finding the most relevant people for your objective. Try interest expansion and lookalike audiences. Always use the pixel where you can and put your trust in technology and science to do the rest. I now want to walk you through step by step setting up a multi-level campaign in Facebook Ads Manager. So here we are in Facebook Ads Manager and I'm going to just walk you through how to build a campaign and show you the different levels and the different structures 
Uh, so here we are, uh, you can see campaign. Underneath campaign, we have our ad sets and underneath that we have our ads. So the first thing to do uh, will be just to create a campaign and we do that by clicking on this button here. We'll give the campaign a name. So the first stage of this campaign is gonna be a prospecting campaign. And I'm gonna be going for engagement. So I'll just give the campaign a name. Because what I want to do is put the lion's share of my budget behind the engagement campaign so I can reach as many relevant people as possible, get them engaged, and then I'm going to use retargeting to show them my sales message. So we keep it as an auction. The campaign objective in this case will be engagement. So we'll choose this one here, post engagement. Now, I'm going to use campaign budget optimization in this one because I'm going to show you how I can have two ad sets nested under the one campaign. And I'm going to give my campaign uh, a daily budget of $25. Next, I'm going to create the ad set, which is the targeting. So I'll give this one a name. This is going to be my audience by interest. And in this example, I'll build the audience on the fly in Ads Manager, but you can also select one of your saved audiences or custom audiences. Finally, I just need to give one of my ads a name. Uh, so this one is going to be my event announcement. Then I hit save to draft to continue. So that brings us up here. You can see now here on the left, the three levels. So this is my campaign, this is my ad set, and this is my ad. I've already put in all of the details here for my campaign. So the next thing for me to do is to set my ad set. Now I'm gonna give this an end date. It's a good idea to do that, otherwise you can leave your campaigns running too long. In this case, I'm promoting a specific event and I want this ad to run for the next week. Here's where I enter my audience details. Now I can select a saved audience that I may have prepared before, but in this example, I'm just going to build one on the fly. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my location. Let's go for the Gold Coast. And I'm gonna go for people that are living within 25 miles of the Gold Coast. Facebook is a bit weird sometimes and does default to miles. Occasionally it shows kilometers, but generally this little setting here usually comes up in miles. Next, I'll choose my age and gender. In this particular example, I'm gonna go for both men and women. But I think I want uh, people in business that might be a little bit older. So let's just go for people that are 30 years and up to maybe 45. There we go. And over here, we see our reach meter. Um, it's in the green zone, which is good. It tells me I can potentially reach 200,000 people who live on the Gold Coast, both men and women of this right age group. Now that's all of the users of this demographic on Facebook in the area. So I'm just gonna use some interest groups now to target this to people that might be interested in coming to a business workshop. One of the cool things about Facebook is that it can give you suggestions. So let's just type in entrepreneurs. And see how that's narrowed my audience right down now to 71,000 people who are interested in entrepreneurship. Let's see what Facebook suggests that I add to that. Business owners, yes, that's a good one. That's a job title. Also, we've got small business owners, a bunch of job titles. I think sometimes they're a little bit too specific. I'm also interested in people that are running a business from home. And let's say those that are self-employed as well. So we could go on and on and select more suggestions, but these are the biggest uh, groups, the ones that came up first, and it's narrowed my audience down a little bit further uh, to 75,000 people. I think 75,000 is a fairly decent size to start with. If this was really small and if this reach meter was over in the red area and was, was warning me that it was too specific, I can turn on interest expansion here. And this basically tells Facebook to go after people that are interested in these things uh, and even if they're not interested in these things, if they're likely to engage with my ad, because that's the objective I selected, then to go after those people as well. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to turn on interest expansion, but I did just want to explain that to you. 
Uh, connections is useful if you're trying to target people who are already connected to your Facebook page or have responded to one of your events. If you are using this connections box, you probably don't want to target too much by interest um, or even age and gender. Uh, I think the best thing you would be able to do is target by location if you had a specific location offer uh, and then choose uh, the specific connection type down here. In this example, I'm not going to use this. I can also save this audience out to my saved audiences if I want to uh, save it as a segment that I might want to use later and I can do that by clicking on this button. Placements, I'm just going to leave this as automatic placements. I like to let Facebook do the work of finding the best spot. There are many ways it could place it, um, you know, including on mobile devices or on Instagram, etc. Uh, you can get into edit placements there by clicking that one and selecting the different placements. But in this example, we shall leave it on automatic. And these settings, generally just leave those as they are. Um, you can spend a lot of money very quickly if you turn on accelerated bidding. Uh, so generally just leave these ones set as they are. Next thing for me to do now is build my ad and I've got a particular ad ready now to promote my special event. So I'm just gonna select my Instagram account that's linked to my page because I want that one uh, to be showing up with my ad and I want my ad to be coming from my business page which is here as well. With the engagement objective, I can select an existing post to boost on my page. This is a much more effective way than using the boost post button. In this case, however, I'm going to create a brand new ad, which won't appear as a post on my page, but will appear in the feed and in everywhere else on Facebook. First thing I'm going to do is select an image or a video, in this case an image. I just click select image and I can upload an image here or select one from my collection here. Very important with Facebook advertising, if you're using a still image that you have no more than 20% logo and text on that, I think that one's gonna look right. Now the ad preview defaults to the mobile view. I find it's a little bit easier to look at the desktop view when I'm building these, it's a little bit larger. But do uh, check the mobile view because that is where the majority of people are gonna be seeing your ad. Scroll down to this next section and here's where I enter my text. And I'm just gonna put that in there. Now I'm going to add a button to this because I want to send people to my website and because I'm doing a prospecting engagement campaign, I'm going to choose learn more for that button just because it's a little bit nicer and less scarier than something like shop now or book now. We'll use those on our direct sales ads later on. You can also choose to send your business page a message using Facebook Messenger with the send message button. For now, I'm going to choose learn more. Then I just need to enter the website URL that I'm sending them to. And in this case, I'm sending them to the Level Up Republic website where they'll book their tickets. Now here's my little engagement ad here. Depending on what objective you choose, you will get more options when building your ad. So you will be able to change the title here and the newsfeed link description here. In this case, with an engagement ad, I don't have as many options to do that. So it's just showing up my business page details there. Now I am actually running a Facebook pixel on the Level Up Republic website, so I'm just going to turn that on. Even though we're not optimising this part of the campaign for conversions, it's a good idea to turn that pixel on so Facebook can get as much data as possible. Now I want to show you a really powerful feature of Ads Manager and that's the ability to duplicate campaigns, ad sets and ads themselves. First of all, I'm going to start by duplicating this ad because I want to make two other variations of it. So I just hit duplicate here. I want these duplicates to appear in the existing ad set for my audience by interest. So all I need to do is say duplicate it twice. And there I have the two copies of my ad. Now I'm going to customize each one of those. So each of these ads is slightly different. And in this ad, I'm going to promote a blog that I wrote on the topic. So I thought this might be a good idea to get people engaged with the subject matter of my upcoming event. So I'll call that blog promotion so I know what it is. Great thing about duplicating now is all these uh, settings are in the right place. So down here, I'm going to select a different image for my blog promotion. Then I'm going to enter the ad copy in this section. I'm going to put a link to the blog on my website over here and I'm going to keep that call to action button as learn more because I'm still in the prospecting phase. So that's my second ad. 
created for a blog promotion. Finally, I'm going to do a video. I'll just rename this so I know what it is. I'll remove that image and I'll select video. And again, I can upload the video I want. Great, so my video is uploaded. I've formatted this video so that it's square and it's one minute in duration because that'll get me the most automatic placements across all of the platforms. Good idea is to choose a thumbnail for your video. That one's actually okay because it has less than 20% text on it. I might choose this one though because it actually has the title of what we're talking about. Now I'm going to paste my copy in here and I'm going to add an action. Again, because we're in the prospecting stage, I'm going to keep it light and friendly and ask them to learn more. And I'm going to send them off to the Level Up Republic website if they want to learn more. And there's my video ad. So now that I've built out one of my ad sets by interest, I'm going to just duplicate this ad set and that's going to duplicate these three ads that I've created underneath it as well. I'm going to keep it in my prospecting campaign because I'm just going to go for a different audience as well to support this. So hit duplicate, it's staying in the original campaign. I just want one copy of it and duplicate that. Now I'm not gonna change my ads at all. I'm gonna have the same ads running, but this one I'm gonna change the targeting here. And I'm gonna use one of my lookalike audiences because these are a really great way to support your interest-based targeting by looking for people who are similar to those who are already your customers. Now the timing still remains the same. The budget is set at the campaign level in this particular one. So I don't have an option to set my budget here. I've still got my location and age group set. Now I'm gonna find my lookalike audience and I do that by clicking in this box and I can actually select two lookalike audience that I've created. One that look like the people that have already purchased tickets and another that looks like people that are on my mailing list. That's pretty good. Now I would assume that a lot of these lookalike people actually share these interests, but it's a little bit too much narrowing by this as well. You can certainly give it a go. I would actually remove the interest targeting on these ones because I'm trying to reach a new segment different to these people by interest. And as you can see, my reach has now improved because I've removed the specific interest targeting. And that's pretty good. I'm happy with that second audience. So all that's left to do now is to publish this campaign. I can give it a quick check just by clicking on every level of the campaign along here and checking each of my individual ads and my targeting and everything just to make sure I've got it right. You can publish from this green button over here, but I'm just gonna close that for the moment and leave it in draft. Now we're at the ad set level, so let's just pop back to the campaign level. Here is my new campaign that I built, Prospecting Engagement. This is just a leftover one of something I was playing with before. If I select the tick box next to that, I can flick through, see the two different audiences that I've created. And if I select that as well, I can then see all of the ads that are sitting under those two audiences. So I'm ready to publish that one now. I'm gonna go up here, hit review and publish. Tells me all of the things that are gonna be published. Now there are some errors here, but this one in particular is just one error and it's nothing to worry about because it's just warning me that my video um, in the video ad won't run in the in-stream placement because it's not five to 15 seconds in duration. It's actually more like 60 seconds. So that's not actually gonna stop my ads from running. It just means that I'm not gonna appear in the in-stream placement, which is fine with me. I'm in all of those other places. So now I'm just gonna hit publish. If you've got any more serious errors, they will show up here. And if they're really serious, it will prevent the campaign from publishing. Just wait for Facebook to do its thing as it publishes all the little different elements of my campaign. And there we have it. My prospecting campaign is published. It's in review. Unless I've made any outrageous claims or upset anyone with my wording, that should be approved by Facebook in the next hour or two and start serving. So the second thing I wanna do is set up a retargeting campaign to run alongside this prospecting campaign 
and show a much more direct sales ad to anyone that's engaged with my good content that I've put in the prospecting campaign. So a couple of ways to do that. You could duplicate this campaign and start removing ad sets that don't matter and changing your ad creative, but I'm just gonna build a new one. This one I'm gonna call retargeting and I'm gonna call it event ticket sales. And this is where the magic happens. Now my objective this time is gonna to be to go for conversions. I've set up the Facebook pixel and I've tested it to make sure that it's running properly and registering conversions from people who actually go through and complete their purchase of a ticket for my event. There's no point in measuring a conversion of someone who just looks at that web page. That's just a single web page view, and that means nothing more than getting clicks through to the website. So do make sure that you have your pixel and conversion point set up if you're going for conversions. The other option, if you're not running a Facebook pixel for some reason, is just to go for a general clicks campaign where you're going for the maximum traffic across to your website, and then you'll have to monitor your sales through another method. In this one, I'm just going to create one ad set. So I'm not going to bother with campaign budget optimization across multiple ad sets. So I'm going to leave that one off. And because my audience is quite small on the Gold Coast here, I'm going to lump everyone together in one ad set. I'm going to call them customers and engagers. Now, if you had a large customer base and a large engagement audience, you might actually want to separate these at the ad set level and then split your budget at the campaign level to see which one performs better. Uh, but in this case, I'm running a small event in a local area, so I'm just gonna lump them all into one. And in fact, I'm gonna create also just one ad, and I'm gonna create a little bit of urgency around this and make it a sales ad, because these people know me, they've engaged with my content, or they've potentially been to one of my events before, so I have no problem in going out there and telling them to buy a ticket to my next event. Proceed to the next step by clicking Save to Draft. That opens up our layered builder again. I'm happy with my retargeting objective at the campaign level. Now add the details to my customers and engagement segment. Now, the first thing I need to do is select my conversion point. If you're running a clicks campaign, uh, you won't have the option to select a conversion point. You simply will just be saying whether you wanna drive traffic to your website and app uh, or to Facebook Messenger. Um, however, as I have my conversion points here, I just need to find the one that relates to buying a ticket. And here we go. So that's the conversion point that relates to purchasing a ticket on the Level Up Republic website. So I'll just skip past dynamic creative and offer as I'm not gonna use those things. Set an end date, that's very important. Don't wanna be telling people to buy tickets after my event is over. And I'm just going to reduce my daily budget down to $5 because I'm working with quite a small audience. I don't want to saturate that or get a really high frequency. But if it works or the frequency is low, I can always increase my daily budget later as I go. Now, my customers and engagers are a custom audience. Saved audiences is for interest targeting. Uh, so in this case, I need to enter my custom audiences here of what I'm looking for. So... I wanna go for people that have watched my video on Facebook, that's a good one. I wanna go for people that have engaged with me on Instagram. I wanna go for people that have engaged with me on Facebook. I wanna go for people that have been on my website, been on both of my websites, great. And also people that are on my mailing list. So these are the, these are the customers. So there we have it, there are all the customers and engagers. Now, one thing I want to exclude from my sales message is anyone who's purchased a ticket. There's no point trying to sell a ticket to someone who's already bought it and wasting money on that. So I've actually created a custom audience based on my pixel data of people that have purchased tickets. And I can exclude them here by entering them into this category. Now, I can see that I am reaching a decent amount of people each day. I know that they're highly engaged um, or customers already, so I'm happy with um, my estimated daily results. You will notice that the reach meter now says unavailable, and this is a problem that has been happening with Facebook for a number of months now. Um, it's not able to give the audience estimates due to privacy reasons, and there's no sign of them fixing that anytime soon. So there has been a bit of talk about the reach meter being broken. It's not exactly broken because it still shows that I'm in the green area here. 
If it was over here in the yellow, it's too wide. If it was down here in the red, it's too narrow, but it is showing up in the green. So again, I'm happy to proceed. Now again, because I'm going for engagers and customers, I definitely don't want to narrow them by interest. I'm also going to leave their ages open and their gender open. However, I think it's important to go for people that are actually on the Gold Coast. And maybe they're going to travel as far as Brisbane as well. So I'm going to put Brisbane in there also. I'd probably just leave this as everyone in this location. Although I could get a little bit more specific by selecting people that live in that location. And that's it. That's my customers and engagers retargeting audience. Leave the interest selections blank, placements automatic, and don't muck with anything down here. Now I'm going to do my ad. I've already given that a name, and I'm going to make a very simple ad here with my key graphic for my event. And here I'm going to put in my copy. I've worded this in a particular way to make it urgent, to remind people that it's coming up soon and that they don't want to miss out. And then I'll put the URL in here. Now, because this is a conversion ad, I have a couple more options down here. So I have a headline that I can add. This is fun, put that in there. And I can also control this little bit of text here, the newsfeed link description. Doesn't show on mobile, but it's nice to take use of that space on a desktop. Make my call to action button book now, as it's now more of a direct sale. Pixel is already installed and tracking because I'm running a conversion campaign. And that is my retargeting ad. Flick back here and I'll be able to publish. And I have my multi-layered campaigns built, retargeting and prospecting there in Ads Manager. Won't be long now until Facebook approves my ad. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and that you can see how easy it is to duplicate campaign elements in Ads Manager.